Lanolin is a popular soothing ingredient found in a lot of topicals such as Aquaphor. But in 2023, lanolin was deemed the allergen of the year by the American Contact Dermatitis Society. But is lanolin really a problem? Don't throw away your Aquaphor just yet. P.S. This video is not sponsored by Aquaphor. In this video, I'll explain why lanolin is on the chopping block and why I still consider it safe to use despite the emerging evidence. I'm Adam Aldahan, board certified dermatologist, and I've spent a bajillion hours researching and simplifying complicated topics so you don't have to. Lanolin is all over the news, at least in dermatology circles. Our beloved aquaphor is being attacked. I feel like a bee in a hive, buzzing around, not knowing what to do while they come for the queen. So I did what I tend to do. I got a little hypomanic, turned up the focus to the max level, and I found the answers. And now I'll share them with you. But before I do, make sure you click that like and subscribe button below. Click it. What is lanolin? Lanolin is actually derived from the wax of sheep's wool. Don't ask. Side note, a lot of things we use on a daily basis tend to have strange origins. Hmm? Sometimes it's better not to know. Anyway, lanolin is a sticky and tacky additive to many topical products, and it's a fan favorite for its texture and its soothing properties. It's not really treating any major skin rashes, but it certainly helps hydrate our skin and keep it from drying out. But can people be allergic to lanolin? The simple answer is yes, they can. Literally every single ingredient in any topical formulation has a potential to cause an allergy. Well, pure petroleum jelly has a strong case against not producing any allergies, but most things can. The question is not whether something can produce an allergy, the better question is how likely is it to produce an allergy. The most common allergen in the world is nickel, which produces contact dermatitis in something like 8 to 20% of patients, depending on the source. If we say America has 340 million people, that's a lot of nickel allergy. Fragrance allergies are seen in up to 10% of patients. That's a lot too. However, if only a handful of patients have an allergy to a specific product, it's probably not worth causing a mass panic about it. So where do we draw the line? That's a tough question, and the answer involves doing some math. We have to calculate how many people will be affected, and then we have to specify the degree that it impacts their quality of life. As in, does it keep them out of work, out of school? Does it cause symptoms such as itch or pain, and how severe? Another factor to consider is the overall cost of healthcare, aka how much money goes into diagnosing and treating these people. If a specific product causes a high enough burden to our health and to the system, we start counseling patients against using it. Now, I don't have a calculator in my pocket to do this, how they weigh the pros and cons on a global level is beyond me, but that's the idea. Let's call it 1%. If 1% of the population has a significant allergy to a product, that's probably high enough to caution patients against using it. Although even at that rate, 99% of the people will be totally unaffected. Do we really need to clear the shelves for something that 99% of the people will have no problem with? I don't know. You be the judge of that. I'm not in the business of ordering recalls. I'm just a scholar. Only a scholar. Only a scholar. Let's get back into lanolin. There's a recently published study that really threw lanolin under the bus. This study was in large part why lanolin was named the allergen of the year in 2023. Not exactly an award you want in your trophy room. So what did the study say? Well, first of all, they looked at 18 years of patch testing data. What is patch testing? It's a type of allergy test that we do in dermatology that specifically detects skin allergies. We place a diluted chemical on an area of the patient's skin, and then we monitor that area from anywhere between three and five days to see if that chemical elicits a reaction. This type of testing requires several visits to the office, and it requires an intimate understanding of how allergic reactions occur, because often we get changes to the skin that are not caused by allergies. Things like sweating, heat, or minor irritation of a chemical can induce a little bit of change in the skin that can be misinterpreted as an allergy. So this type of testing takes real expertise. Overall, patch testing is an incredibly invaluable tool that has helped patients identify something that they're actually allergic to and, well, avoid it. So the study in question looked retrospectively, aka into past data, and compiled a whopping 43,000 patients who were tested for lanolin specifically from 2001 to 2018. The lanolin that was tested was either plain lanolin or Americol L101, which is basically the brand name for lanolin alcohol. Same difference. The results showed that 3.3% of the patients had a positive reaction to lanolin. All right, that's it. Close the book. 3.3%, that's a lot. Clear the shelves. If only it were that simple. Let's dive a little deeper. Here are a few problems with taking this number and calling the press. 
Problem one, garbage in, garbage out. This is a saying that transcends the whole of scientific literature. If you put garbage data in, you're gonna get garbage results out. I'm not calling out the authors of this paper. Actually, the study was conducted fairly well. It's just that they overhyped weak results. You'll see what I mean. In this study, out of all the people who reacted to lanolin, over 50% of them had a one plus reaction. What does that mean? Well, in patch testing, we rate the strength of a reaction by, well, how aggressively the skin reacts. This is somewhat subjective and user dependent, but there are some fairly standard metrics that we go by. No reaction is a zero. Everyone pretty much agrees on that. For a little redness, we give a one plus. Generally, one plus has little to no swelling and no blistering. For a moderate amount of redness with some swelling and if maybe a few blisters, we would give this a two plus. For extreme blistering, three plus all the way. Classic allergic contact dermatitis. One plus reactions are arguably insignificant, and many would even classify these as doubtful reactions, as in doubtful that they are actually an allergy. One plus reactions can be caused by irritation, sweat, heat, all sorts of things that are not true allergies. So adding these into the mix is inherently overestimating the prevalence. Simple as that. In this study, because over half of the reactions were one plus, I'm definitely suspicious that the prevalence of lanolin allergy has been overestimated. Problem two, the numbers game. This is the main problem. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's assume for argument's sake that all the one plus reactions were true allergies. I'm allergic. That would leave their rate of positive reactions at 3.3%. But this is not representative of the general population. This study did not look at all Americans. It only looked at a small group of Americans who had the worst skin rashes so bad that they weren't able to be treated and needed to climb the treatment ladder to patch testing. So before we even look at the numbers, regardless of the results, we already know that we're dealing with a biased sample. The vast majority of people never undergo patch testing because they don't have skin allergies. Depending on the source, as much as 20% of people have some sort of contact dermatitis. 20% is a lot, but even among those, most of them don't undergo patch testing because usually we can identify the offending agent on history alone and eliminate it. So to accurately estimate, accurately estimate? Yeah, we're accurately estimating. To accurately estimate the prevalence of lanolin allergy, we have to do some additional calculation. Okay, so 3.3% of patients in the study tested positive to lanolin. Let's say this percentage holds true for all Americans if they were to get patch tested. It won't, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt. How many patch tests were done in this 18 year stretch from 2001 to 2018? Well, this article said from 2010 to 2018, there were an average of 1.25 million patch tests done throughout America. Now the number of tests done increased each year. So before 2010, we can assume that there were fewer tests done, but for argument's sake again, let's just say 1.25 million patch tests per year, and we'll multiply that by 18 years. This comes out to about 22.5 million patch tests over the period that this study was evaluating. That's a lot of patch testing. Now, while 22.5 million seems like a lot, let's put that into perspective. In 2023, there were 340 million people in America. So 22.5 million patch tests only represents 6.6% of the total American population. So only 6% of people actually get patch testing in the first place. It's actually less than that, but we're being generous. To get a real idea of the prevalence of a skin allergy, we can't just take the worst of the worst skin rash patients and extrapolate their results to the general population. We can't do that. The better way to estimate prevalence would be to take, let's say, a thousand people totally randomly. Some will have skin rashes, some will have perfect skin, some may have sunglasses, who knows? You want to get an unbiased mix of people and then test them all to lanolin. I bet you way less than 1% will react. So my conclusion is that lanolin skin allergies are grossly overestimated in the general population. This explains why you don't see angry mobs raising torches outside of the Aquaphor headquarters. Think about it. Aquaphor is everywhere. If lanolin allergies were really that common, don't you think more people would notice? Do I recommend Aquaphor? Yes, I still recommend Aquaphor to my patients. Lanolin is a potential allergen, but the rate of allergy is not enough for me to consider it a worrisome product in most patients. Again, this video is not sponsored by Aquaphor. This is strictly science. I keep it ethical. Hope you enjoyed your coffee break.